it feels a little bit weird to be talking about the end of the year in November, but I mean, November is kind of the Thursday of the year, so the end of the year is nigh. Thank God. Hi, welcome. Come on in. My name is Aoife and today I am taking the end of the year book tag. This is something that I have seen floating around on BookTube so often. I know Kayla from Books with Lala did it. I know that Danny from Current Chapters has also done it, but I'm going to put my spin on it today. So this was originally created by April Bissett. I think she made it in 2018 or 19 or so, but I'm going to focus on this year and look back at the dumpster fire that was 2020. Question number one, are there any books that you need to finish before the end of the year? And yeah, I, I still need to finish Bear Town. I started this in July. I read this as a body read with page from pages with page and I left it in the office one Friday evening and was written off sick from like the Monday to Friday of the following week. So I didn't have the book with me. I couldn't find a copy of it on my library app. I couldn't find a copy of it for, I didn't want to buy a copy on my Kindle when I already had it. So I left it to the side and I said, I was going to go back. I'm going to go back to it. I'm just going to pick up a new book now. I put this as like, want to read on my Goodreads um, TBR and I'm going to keep the bookmark in it but I have actually taken the bookmark out. So I have no idea where I was supposed to be in this book. I don't know if I'm going to finish it by the end of 2020 or not because I found I found this book really difficult to get through. It was really hard to get into at the start because I felt like there wasn't anything really happening at the start of the book and that did kind of put me off it a bit. But I do know also that it does pick up the pace and that the action does kind of pick up when you get to maybe 30-40% into the book. For me, that's a little bit late for the action to be picking up. But I don't know. I'm probably going to give this a try again in 2021. Just, I don't know if it's going to be this year that I'm going to finish it. So question two. Do you have an autumnal book to transition into the end of the year? I don't really read a lot of autumnal books. I mean, I did make an autumn-themed TBR in that a lot of the books on that had autumn themed covers or autumn colours on the cover. But I wouldn't necessarily say I read one that was autumnal themed with the explicit reason of kind of going from autumn reading into end of the year reading. Um, I think the most autumnal books that I read this year would actually be Where the Crawdads Sing, which I finished in mid-October so I think that that would kind of be an autumnal book because it felt very autumnal it's set on the marshes in North Carolina it has very autumnal cover it felt like an autumnal book and I think that that's why I put it on my autumn TBR so let's just say that that was an autumnal book that kind of brought me from autumn reading into winter reading question number three is there any release that you are still waiting for and to be honest I think every release that I've been waiting for this year is already out like I really wanted to read um pretending by Holly Bourne and that came out in April I really wanted to read Majesty by Catherine McGee and that came out at the start of September I really wanted to read After the Silence by Louise O'Neill and that also came out in September really wanted to read The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osmond that also came out at the start of September there are a couple of books that are on my neck alley TBR I am going to be reading quite a few of them for neck alley no November. So a lot of the books that I would have been really excited to read are still on that shelf. So we're talking stuff like The Christmas Swap by Sandy Baker, The Last Charm by Ella Albright, which actually just came out last Thursday. There aren't really that many books that I'm still waiting for them to be released. They are either already have been released and I haven't read them yet or they have already been released and I've taken them off my TBR. Question number four, what are three books that you think you're going to read by the end of the year? This has to be one of them. I have had this on my shelf since April. I have wanted to read it since I heard about it. I have it on my five star prediction list and it is the final book in that five star prediction list that I have yet to read. I really, really want to get through this one. It fits into a couple of prompts for the Not Safe for Workathon, which I run and which I take part in every time that it pops up. <sighs> because it fits into a couple of those prompts, though, I kind of have to leave it until mid to late December. But I am going to get around to it. I promise. I am. I have to get around to it because it's the last book on that five star prediction list that I have to read. As for other books that I want to read by the end of the year, again, we're talking The Christmas Swap by Sandy Barker, which 
I really enjoy the concept of. It sounds something like The Holiday, that Christmas movie, which is something that I really like anyway. I like that movie so much. So seeing that in a kind of a book format, I think would be really interesting to see. Um, I really want to get to The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett because everybody that I know has read it has really, really loved it. Um, I absolutely adored American Royals by Catherine McGee when I read it in like January or February of this year. And I have got the sequel somewhere on that shelf and I am going to try and read it by the end of this year. I've got books that are on my winter TBR that I want to read. I've got books on my net gallery TBR that I really want to read. I just need to actually just sit down and read them. Question number five. Is there any book that you think is going to surprise you and be your favorite book by the end of 2020? I mean, if there's any book that has a chance of doing that, it's Pretending by Holly Bourne because Holly is my autobi author. I have read almost everything that she has written so far. I am in love with her writing. I love the concept of this book where she kind of becomes this manic pixie dream girl going out on dates with a guy that she is the complete opposite of the person that she puts out in front of him. I love Holly Bourne's books. I love Holly Bourne's writing. I love her as a person. I've heard her on a lot of podcasts. I've seen her at events. I don't know why I haven't picked this book up yet. I think it's because I have worked it up so much in my head that if I don't enjoy it so much, I'm just going to be really disappointed in myself. But I just, I just have to read it. I just, I have to, I have to read it. Final question, question number six. Have you started to make reading plans for 2021 yet? Um, yeah, kind of, but also no. So I have kind of planned out what I'm going to read in 2021, but I haven't said the specific times that I'm going to read the specific books. I just know that I'm going to get through the backlog that is sitting here behind me and the backlog that is on my Kindle and the backlog that is on my NetGalley shelf because I counted how many books that I have recently and it's almost 500 and that seems like quite a lot of books. So I'm going to do my best to get through as many of the books that I have in my house, as many of the books I have in my Kindle. I might even get my parents to send me over some books that I have still on my shelf at home that I haven't picked up since I haven't been at home. I'm definitely going to do a lot of shopping my own stash in 2021. So those are my answers to the end of year tag. Have you taken this tag yourself? Because leave the link below. I would love to see it. Don't forget to like and subscribe because I have new videos up every week. Now get on out of here.